Hey everyone, I'm James O'Brien, physical therapist, and welcome to the Perfecting Movement YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you two exercises that you should be doing regularly to help improve both your walking and your running mechanics. If you do these exercises regularly, it'll strongly reduce the chance that you get hip, buttock, and even knee pain. So let's begin. So with both walking and running, it's all about hip extension. So this is me extending my hip, using my hip extensors, my buttocks here, to do the job. As I engage those hip extensors at their end range, I'm actually stretching the hip flexors here. So we want to do exercises that engage the hip extensors with the hip in an extended position. All right? That's different than doing exercises like deadlifts or squats where we use the hip extensors, but we don't actually take the hip into an extended position which again is very specific to both walking and running. Because when we walk or when we run, it's all about getting the world to go behind us as we engage those hip extensors. As we engage those hip extensors in an extended position, it stretches the hip flexors. And often, we're all very tight in our hip flexors because we sit a lot throughout the day. As we sit, our hip flexors here, which are in charge of flexing our hip, get tight, and as the years go by, and as we get older, we often become flexed forward at the hip. And then we lose the ability to extend through the hip, and as a result, we arch our lower back, and we develop low back pain. So if we do these two exercises that I'm about to show you proactively, we have the simultaneous benefit of stretching the hip flexors while strengthening the hip extensors. Two very good things. So the great thing about these two exercises is you don't need any special equipment. They can be done right on your floor or potentially even in your bed. All right, so the two exercises are the double leg bridge and the single leg bridge. All right, so let's show you how to do that. So for the double leg bridge, you wanna bend your knees quite a bit. It's important that your toes don't point out to the side, but rather that they point straight forward in line with your knees. That protects your knees. Next, you want your feet to be about hip width apart. They don't need to be out very wide, and they don't need to be all the way together. About hip width apart, knees bent, toes pointed forward. From this position, what you'll do is lift your hips up in the air as you firmly squeeze your butt together. And that's very important because the biggest error with this exercise is when people lift way up like this and they hyperextend their back. Here, I'm extending through my lower back as I'm extending through my hip. But our goal here is just hip extension, not lumbar extension. And for many of you out there, this could generate low back pain. So to prevent that from happening, we simply squeeze the butt firmly together. As I squeeze my butt firmly together, notice how my pelvis rolls slightly backwards. As I do that, now I feel a nice stretch here. So I lift up in the air as I firmly squeeze my butt together. I hold about three seconds, and then I come down. For many of you doing this exercise, you might feel a cramping sensation here in the back of your thigh, okay? And that's because you're trying to have your hamstring muscles do the work instead of your buttocks here. So to reduce the activity of the hamstrings, we wanna take our feet and push them down and forward, that way, into the uh, surface, as if I'm trying to push myself off the table. And in fact, often when I do bridges, I'll either hold on to something or I'll have my hands behind me so I can push down very firmly. So I'll hold on here as I push my feet down and forward into the surface. I'm not lifting up my toes, and I'm for sure not trying to pull my body that way. Instead, I'm pushing this way. That will excite my quadriceps more, which will shut off my hamstrings so they don't cramp up, and I get a better workout in my buttocks. So to reiterate, I push my feet down and forward. I lift my hips up in the air. I squeeze my buttocks firmly together. I can hold for about three seconds and then down. For some of you, even if you're doing all of this correctly, you'll still get a cramp in your hamstrings. Don't worry about holding it. Just go up and down. As your buttock muscles start to wake up, you'll stop getting that cramping sensation. So this is the double leg bridge. I usually have my patients do about three sets of 20 of those. Then we can also do the single leg bridge. So this is for sure a more challenging exercise. And given the choice, if I'm short on time, I prefer to do the single leg bridge because I feel like I get more out of it. So this is the single leg bridge. I bring one knee up in the air, and I take this knee not just straight up, but rather almost this way. And the reason I take it that way, it prevents me from overarching my lower back. And all the rules are the same, just like so. My knee is in line with my toe here. This knee is in line with that toe. I push this foot, the right foot here, down and forward. As I lift up, hold about three seconds, 
and then down. If you're doing these exercises and you're experiencing any type of pain, especially low back pain, these exercises aren't for you. However, it very well could be that you're overarching your back. So just be mindful to really clinch the buttocks and not overarch the back. So you're probably asking yourself, if the single leg bridge is like my preferred exercise, why would you do both? And I would say, that's a stupid question. I'm just kidding. There's no such thing as a stupid question, except asking whether or not there is a such thing as a stupid question. So let me explain why you'd want to do both. So with the double leg bridge, you get higher, okay? As I go up here, I get that nice stretch. When I do a single leg bridge, you can see I don't get up as high, I don't get as good of a stretch. But again, the single leg bridge, I like more because I feel like it incorporates more muscles to keep me stable. So when I do the double leg bridge, I get that nice stretch here. When I do the single leg bridge, I'm getting more force going through my buttock, but also I'm working more stabilizers to keep me in line. So they're really both good exercises to do. You wanna keep things simple? About three sets of these, three sets to fatigue. You know, I usually go for about 20 repetitions. You could try 10 repetitions, you could try 15 repetitions. Honestly guys, the goal is to give yourself a workout. As you get really strong, you could even maybe do it against like some type of resistance band and you can figure out how to configure that or have some weights in your lap and do it that way. Uh, I typically, to work on my, um, I like to run, uh, to enhance my running, I don't do it with any resistance at all and I feel like I still get a pretty good workout. So anyway, check out some of the other videos. If you wanna learn how to walk better, you can look here. You wanna learn some great running drills, you can come over here. Uh, or just check out my playlist section. I've got lots of great videos on how to learn how to perfect your movement. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.